Hello and welcome to another 140k Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now before we get into today's video, I would like to say a huge thank you to Dustin Martin Boyd for sending in some awesome pictures of his Chaos Sisters of Battle. These heretical ladies look absolutely fantastic. Love the combination of the demon weapons and the crazy hairdos and the colourful bolters. It's all absolutely fantastic. So thank you for sending these pictures, Dustin. They look really, really cool. If anyone else has got any good pictures they want me to use in my videos, please post them on my Facebook page or email them directly to me. And there'll be a link to my Facebook page down in the description below and my email address will be down there as well. Without further ado, let's get into today's video. So recently, Games Workshop has been releasing a whole slew of models which have a certain uh, interesting game mechanic, which means they can only take a certain number of wounds per phase. So for example, you've got things like the Void Dragon and Gazgul Thracker, who can only take, I believe it's four wounds per phase. In the case of the Void Dragon, you can regenerate wounds every turn as well, which makes them particularly difficult to deal with. Now, why this has been introduced is so that Games Workshop can sell big, cool, pretty models that won't get blown off the turn, uh, blown off the board in one turn. <laughs> Wish Baneblades had something like that. Am I right, guys? Uh, but the problem with these models for certain armies is that there are factions which only really operate in one phase. Now, this can be a tricky thing for Guard because traditionally we have been a shooting army. Now, as as with anything, the Guard is a very adaptable faction, so we can mix it up a little bit. But um, one of the problems is that, you know, outside of the shooter, shooter phase, we've got nailed down. Assault phase, we've got Bulgrins. We can probably, you know, Barney in that as well. But the Psychic phase is still a pretty weak phase for the Guard. Um, our, our Psychers are over overcosted, quite frankly. Primary Psychers is okay, but for 40 odd points for a single Psychic power, not ideal. Most of the time what you're going to be doing with Psychic Power, you want to be putting things like Psychic Barrier down. You want to be things like Night Shroud down. Really. And to be fair, you don't see a lot of Primera Psychers either. What's the thing that most people take? The Astropath. Because why are you taking them? Not only can he do those same Psychic Powers, no problemo, but he also gives you the 18-inch Astral Divination, ignoring cover, and the terrain-filled addition that we find ourselves most people aren't taking uh, Primaris uh, Psychers, they're taking Astropaths. But the problem with the Astropath is whilst he's great at buffing, is he doesn't have any damage output. So it's a bit of a catch-22. Either you find yourself buffing something, or you find yourself uh, trying to do some damage output, but missing out on buffs. It's just, it's not ideal. And the problem with uh, both of these characters, respectively, is they're in relatively competitive slots for your, uh, well, by slots, I mean detachable slots. So, Primera Psychers, they uh, they take up an HQ slot. Now, most Guard Commanders are going to be wanting to run two battalions, and you're going to be filling those battalions up with three Tank Commanders and three Company Commanders. You don't really want to sacrifice either Orders or um, or Tank Commanders to, to get some Psychic power in there. So then you go over to the elite slot with the Ash Path, but the elite slot is pretty contested as well. You've got your Bulgrins, you've got your priests for your Bulgrins, you've got your platoon commanders. Again, are you going to sacrifice orders? It's difficult. So you can tend to squeeze an Ash Path in here and there, but HQ slots and elite slots tend to be pretty crowded in the guard army. You know, if only the Ash Path was in the fast attack slot. <laughs> anyway, the sprinting cardio Ash Path. Anyway, so what can we do about it? Well, there's a really handy psychic battery that we can draw upon, which is an Inquisitor. Okay, and there's a specific build that I really like to run with my Inquisitors. I've started using it a lot with my Scions to give them some just really effective psychic support. Now, just to go through a couple of things with the Inquisition, um, you can take an Inquisitor in an Agents for Imperium slot, Agents of the Imperium. Now, Age of the Imperium is a separate, no-force organization slot, basically. So you can take it alongside your three tank commanders and three company commanders, and it doesn't take up an HQ slot. You just get one Age of the Imperium in, in its specific slot, off the board, off the side of the 
detachment sheet having a great time. So that's the first thing. It doesn't interfere with any of your other detachment choices, which is great. Now you can, you know, you can take assassins and whatnot, but we're talking about inquisitors today. Now the inquisitor that I like to take is an auto malleus one, and he's basically he's been nicknamed the double smite inquisitor. He doesn't actually do the smite spell twice, but he does two sources of mortal wounds, which is really really nice. So what you do is you take a, a bare bones inquisitor. You don't need to give him anything else but just his bolt pistol and chainsaw that he comes with. Now that's going to set you back sixty points. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. And for your sixty points, before you even get into anything like what psychic powers he can do. You actually get a really impressive stat line. You get weapon skill 3+, plus, blitz skill 3+, plus, strength 3, toughness 3. You get 5 wounds. 5 wounds. That's the most wounds we can get on a basic character. Um, with 4 attacks, 5 with the chainsword. Leadership 9 and a 4 plus save with a 5 plus invulnerable save because he does have a refractor field. Now, the Inquisitor comes with a, like I said, a whole bunch already. That's 60 points for that stat line character. That's pretty nice. Now, already... Already, he comes with uh, Unquestioning Wisdom, which means within six inches, everyone can use leadership. So already, not only is he 60 points, decent combat character, decent wounds, he's also a Lord Commissar wrapped in there as well. He has a six inch, nine, leadership nine bubble. Really, really nice. Now, um, the way, he does have some things where, you know, when he's when you're attacking Chaos or Demon units, you can reroll the hits and the wound rolls, but to be fair, it's only with a chainsaw or a bolt pistol, so it's not, not a big deal, not why you're really here. What you're looking at is you want to make him a Psyker. Now, you can make any Inquisitor a Psyker for nothing. It doesn't cost a command point, it doesn't cost a, uh, an army point or a power level or anything like that. You just make him a Psyker. Straight up, you make him a Psyker. Now, when he is a Psyker, it allows him to cast one power and deny one power. Okay, that's pretty nice. Now, obviously with that, it means you can only cast one power, which is, you know, smite. But if you uh, give him, if you spend a CP on him and you give him the stratagem Arbiter of the Emperor's Will, and you then also designate his Ordo as Ordo Malleus, it allows you to take a Warlord trait on your Inquisitor. And you can take the Ordo Malleus specific Warlord trait, which is called Psychic Mastery. Now, what's really good about Psychic Mastery is it allows him to cast an additional power and deny an additional power. In fact, he knows he knows a fair few powers at that point. So, when, when you add, that means you can cast two and deny two. And that costs you 60 points and one command point. So, that's pretty good, you know. Um, now, what you want to do for those two Psychic Powers is you don't really care about the other ones you can take. You know, what you want to take with within that build is you want to take Smite, of course, and you also want to take a power called Castigation. Now, Castigation is a six uh, power level spell, so it's pretty easy to get off. You know, it's only really difficult if it's a seven power level spell. So six power level spell, and it's a really unusual way of basically smiting something, but it's, a, it's, what, it's what we call in the industry a targeted smite. It means you don't have to target the nearest unit with it. Smite is always the nearest visible unit. Targeted smites, or the, you know, the term that we use for it, means you can pick who you want to do the damage to. So with a targeted smite, like Castigation, how it works is you pick a, an enemy unit within 18 inches and visible to the Psyker. And in this particular case, you roll three dice. If the total exceeds the lowest leadership characteristic in that unit, that unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. Now the average dice roll on three dice is 10.5. That's the average dice roll. Okay? So you should there's nothing in the game which has like greater than leadership 10. Okay. So you're pretty much guaranteed to get this off. It's not it's not 100 percent guaranteed, but you're pretty much guaranteed to get this off. Okay. So that way, if you've got something like a Void Dragon or a Thracker coming towards you, you can do two lots of D3 Mortal Wounds to it in the, in, at the start of the Psychic phase. Okay, now obviously the Smite is a little tricky to get off. You might have to, you know, you might not be able to Smite this, the, the big bad because obviously that has to go towards an issue. But if with some clever positioning, dropping out of a Valkyrie, like if you're Scions, A, C, you can get behind the screens. You can drop down, you can Smite. You can then castigation, and that is an average of four mortal wounds, and that is pretty much all the mortal wounds you can do to that uh, those that particular creature in that phase. 
So there you go. Then the, then the shooting phase comes along. God, you're not going to have any problem dealing four wounds or something in the shooting phase. Off you go. Charge phase comes through. You've hopefully cleared some screens. You've taken some wounds off the monster. Send the Bulgans in. Boom. You have successfully handled one of these big bad creatures in one turn. Now sometimes you can't, sometimes the way they're set up you can't get them in one turn, but many of them you can. Many of them you can just get them in one turn if you can operate in every single one of the phases. Uh, like I said, I really like this for my um, for my Scions. My current HQ character lineup for my Scions is three Tempestor Primes, a Lord Commissar, and this Inquisitor. Now the reason I do that is that the three Tempestor Primes take loads of orders and then I give my Commissar the Warlord trait so he can do an order as well. And he's a leadership bubble. Sounds have surprisingly weak leadership. And the Lord Commissar, he's also a leadership bubble. And he's smite support. So it's a really, really effective little combination. I find it works really, really well with Scions. Um, and it really fits in with the fluff and the theme of Scions. It works very well with Land of Lions. Because you might be thinking, well, don't you want to take Astropaths for your Scions? Scions tend to have enough AP to burn through cover. Especially Land of Lions. Because I've got the extra AP on everything. So what you tend to find is even when people are in cover, you just, you don't need the Ash Path when you're playing Land on Lions because you just burn through it and you start hitting the end run save. You start hitting the end run save. So it's not a problem. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. This is another sort of quick tip tactical video. If you have enjoyed this video and you like what you've seen today, please consider heading on over to the Patreon page. There'll be a link down in the description below. Channel is entirely funded by Patreon. No monetization or anything like that. No paid promotion or anything like that. Not a corporate shill over here. Morning Glory fully funded by, uh, by the public, by the awesome members of the Imperial Guard. Goes without saying, but I always, I always make sure to say it, huge thank you to my current Patreon supporters. You guys are absolutely fantastic. Without you, the channel would just, you know, well, doesn't bear thinking about. And just so everyone's clear, what I do with the Patreon money, I'm really transparent with it. It all gets reinvested back into the channel. It either gets spent on uh, stuff for the Great Mordy Restoration Project and other projects, new projects for the army, uh, new new armies for the channel. Uh, and it also gets spent for, when go for tournament tickets and also for new terrain and doing things like the Battle Bunker as well. So... Anyway, that's it. Shameless plug over. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Massive thank you to all the Patreon supporters again, and all the viewers, and all the subscribers. You guys are absolutely fantastic. And of course, I'll see you guys next time.